Will they be kind if I... Yeah, yeah that one's a palm high. What you got there? Ooh, yeah, it's warm out there. Uh, sweet and spicy trail mix and some sweet and spicy jalapeno chips. Oh. I guess I'm feeling snacky. So are you eating those now? Uh, why? Well, I was wondering how much I should take for a shot. Oh, so I guess the question is, are you eating these now? <laughs> Did you get those to share? <laughs> of course, I always do. <laughs> no fears or regrets. Just take the jump and hold your breath. It feels good to be alive. Bees get hangry. <laughs> they really do. They're like horses, uh, except there's you know 60,000 of them per hive and they sting you. <laughs> if you're not working. <laughs> you need to stay in between the lines. You know, like when you're coloring as a kid and they tell you to stay in between the lines, you gotta stay in between the lines. If you break any rules, you will be reprimanded. I was struggling with uh, PTSD and anxiety from my time in the Army. I had 10 years in the Army as a, both a paratrooper and then as a bomb disposal. Why should I care about honeybees? Yeah, so more than 80% of our food crops uh, that we eat are pollinated by honeybees. Wow. Uh, you know, if they go, we're, we're in a real problem. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.life. I think I've seen that sign going down 95. Yeah, I recognize that too. Yeah. That like, uh, I don't think I've ever been there. Like but that song, high on Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain Tennis. No, so it's Rocky Top. Good old Rocky <laughs> Top. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Is that John Rocky Denver? Top. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Rocky Top, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> we are not in Tennessee. No, we're not. I was born in Tennessee. Oh, ah. ah. <laughs> Fun fact. Uh, Cherie trivia. Uh, fun fact. Yeah. Well, this is different for us to travel this way. <laughs> you know, a we're not uh, typically yeah. riding together unless we're I in know. a Jeep. I know. But we have a whole RV behind us or with us. Yeah, I feel like a turtle with a shell on its back, taking its home everywhere it goes. Well, they're both running their generators. We get to be right next to a pond. Nice. And is that a real duck? A real white duck in there? Look at this. Look at all that. Yeah, it's nice. Hey, puppy. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I heard there was friendly dogs here. Oh, yeah. You guys are friendly, aren't ya? <laughs> yeah. You're the welcoming committee.
Good morning from Secret Garden Honey Farm and another harvest host and you always feel so like relaxed like you got like the best night's sleep out in nature like this. You've got the rooster doing his morning uh, sing-along here and uh, the ducks are quacking, and it's just all the sounds of nature out here, and the fresh air you can just breathe. Morning. Hey. You're a friendly dog. He is. He's figured out. That. <laughs> now we'll go back and see these. It's nice and uh, it's nice and early in the morning. They'll be accepting visitors. Right. Uh, that's one thing I noticed about bees is they're not really early risers, huh? <laughs> I started this and we were talking about for uh, uh, PTSD treatment for myself. And so I started with just a couple of hives and I just kind of picked a spot. That I was like, that's oh, got good sun, you know, and... So how many hives do you have total? The one in the winter, I've got 52. Hopefully, okay. Hopefully that's what we'll have come summer. So how many times have you been stung? Oh, I would, it wouldn't... It wouldn't be a good plan to count. Uh, <laughs> you you uh, lose count. Oh, how many times in one day? Can you count that? Or? Oh, I got hit the other day, I don't know, 20 or 30 times. Uh, uh, it was rough. Matter of fact, we uh, we do a program called Soldiers to Agriculture. Uh, okay. Where soldiers getting out of the Army uh, can come look at different career fields. And so I had two or three of them out here helping me that day. When okay. We were and uh, they learned a lot about aggressive hives because one of them came away with, I don't know, probably 100 stingers in their pants. It just got in the pants. Okay. You know, it doesn't get through, but you can look at it and uh, it's brutal. It's like, see why I'm, see why we're taking care of that hive? <laughs> I know what, some of the viewers are going to say 20 or 30 times. They're going to be like, wow, no way. Yeah. I think I, I was definitely stung over a dozen times in one day when I was doing this. Uh, but uh, yeah, and it, you get kind of used to it, right? Where it's yeah. like, it's not a big deal, but the average person is like, Ooh, yeah, scary. Well, I should introduce Jim here uh, with Secret Garden Bees, and we're in Linden, North yeah. Carolina. Yeah. So we are at another Harvest Host, and uh, like Sheree and I often like to do on our channel, we, we love Harvest Hosts for the unique locations, and we're just on the app last night looking for places to stay. I messaged you guys, and like, I don't know, 10 minutes later, you said, sure, come on out. You work with, uh, is it about 50 hives yep. right now? How did you get started in this business? So I grew a hobby into a business uh, uh, about four and a half years ago. I was struggling with uh, PTSD and anxiety from my time in the Army. Uh, I had 10 years in the Army uh, as a, both a paratrooper and then as a bomb disposal. And, wow. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, the bomb disposal part, uh, well, the paratrooper part caused me some brain damage uh, from uh, one hitting my head a lot of times, and then two, I've got a piece of shrapnel stuck in the side of my head from one of my tours in Iraq. Wow. And then bomb disposal, uh, constant anxiety, constant awareness caused me some anxiety issues. I don't like medications, uh, so uh, I was, I've always looked for other ways to, to treat it. And the, the Veterans Affairs did studies on beekeeping and its effects on anxiety. And so I tried it out, and I was just really pleasantly surprised. I have to be focused, I have to be calm, I have to be deliberate, uh, and the bees will be very calm with me. And But if I'm worked up or having an anxiety attack, uh, they, they get very excited too, and they give you feedback. And it forces you to calm down and just center yourself. And once I figured that out, man, it was, it was really amazing for me. Uh, and then I, I figured out I could take this and I could turn that into a, turn it into a business by making honey. Uh, so that's what I did. And I started growing this and growing this. And now I'm a full-time farmer. That uh, is so interesting. So you almost have like a symbiotic relationship with the bees. As you go, so go the bees. Yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, they're like horses, uh, except there's, you know, 60,000 of them per hive and they sting you. 
<laughs> if you're not working right. home. Right. Well, first off, uh, thank you so much for your service. Uh, as we've mentioned on the channel before, uh, Sheree and I have a passion for people with PTSD because so many people are suffering um, from that, and you've found a way to, you know, harness a hobby into something that treats that. And uh, Christy, your wife, was mentioning that you have some plans, uh, possibly, of working with uh, with more military around this. Yeah, so uh, we're part of the uh, uh, the adopt, or I mean, the uh, the, the soldiers to agriculture program uh, that's sponsored through. Cumberland County uh, and then Fort Bragg for soldiers who are getting out of the Army and are looking for either a vocation or, or looking to learn more about these things uh, and we just had a number of soldiers come out here as part of that program to help work through hives and learn and I uh, I mentor quite a few soldiers uh, on how to do this uh, and it's you know a return for me because I got into this when I first started a couple of other soldiers mentored me okay uh, to teach me and answer my questions Teaching them has been really good for me as well. We planted all these wildflowers, which are looking a little rougher in the fall, to give them some more forage. Uh, but that's been a real, a real neat investment. I was amazed how planting two acres of wildflowers changed the ecology of my entire farm. I have now monarch butterflies here that I didn't have before. I have uh, gold finches, which were never here. Uh, we've got new species of. Uh, these yellow butterflies, never seen them before. Uh, it, things are showing up here that I don't know where they were, but they're here now, and it's pretty that's neat. cool. Yeah, I seeing the yellow butterflies yeah. out there. This area of North Carolina spent 200 years eradicating the uh, natural forage of the monarch butterfly uh, because it wasn't compatible with cotton or tobacco. But this is the natural migration route for the monarch butterfly, and so as they were North Carolina's building back that natural population, the monarchs are coming back. So you may have heard in the news uh, that honeybees are dying off and some people are like, well, they sting and I don't eat honey uh, necessarily. Why should I care about honeybees? Yes, yeah, so more than 80% of our food crops uh, that we eat are pollinated by honeybees. Wow. Uh, you know, if they go, we're, we're in a real problem. We've got uh, native bees here to North America that do some of it. Uh, but most of our food crops are pollinated by honeybees. But what's really uh, the problem is uh, two invasive species have moved in over the last decade. Uh, there's a, the worst is the Varroa mite. Its actual Latin name is Varroa destructor. Uh, wow. That, that tells you anything. Sounds scary. It is. It uh, moved in from Asia and it's a parasitic mite. Every hive in America has them. You can't get rid of them. All you can do is control them. And it causes the bee to be deformed, not have wings uh, and if it gets wow. out of control you can come out and see your whole hive just dead and there's there's no known way to treat them here in america uh, the only way we can take care of them right now is with uh, a, a rotating selection of either natural or chemical solutions uh, and we have to keep them under control and the, that is becoming a real problem it's killing our death rate right now is about 40 percent a year of the hives wow in a good year Wow. These little strips they crawl around on, they get the chemical on their feet, and then the nurse bees go in and clean out the insides of the honeycomb to prepare it for the queen to lay. And when they do that, they get the chemical inside. Uh, and that's what kills the mites, because uh, there's a mite waiting inside. We did that, and then uh, this year I had to, to add a second option. You can see these little spacers that are on a couple of these hives. Uh, there's a separate product inside of there that I had to put in that actually fumigates the hive. Uh, it literally spreads the fumes throughout the hive of that and it gets inside everything and causes it. But it's a little more invasive and so I try not to use it. Uh, but a couple of these hives I had to retreat because their mite count was still a little bit high. Uh, so we're one of the only one of the only livestock growers out there where we're gonna 40% of our, our crops are gonna die every year. Yeah wow that's crazy and those aren't the only challenges for bees right? You got weather. Yeah. There's still all the natural stuff, weather, uh, environment. We had a drought this year, so our honey production was way off. Uh, of course, bears, uh, raccoons, all the natural predators that come out. Uh, uh, there's another one uh, that came in uh, from Asia called the uh, uh, 
uh, small hive beetle gets inside and lays its eggs inside of their uh, the honey itself and then just infests the whole hive if you can't keep track of them. Interestingly enough, a Swiffer pad is how you treat them. <laughs> they, they, you put a Swiffer pad in the hive, the bees muss it up, and then the hive beetles crawl inside the Swiffer pad to hide it, and they cannot get out of a Swiffer pad for some reason. Oh, okay. You pull it out, and it'll be full of two or three hundred beetles. It's crazy. Wow. That's right. I think, uh, they, I mean, people out there, I mean, they just think, well, it's bees, they make honey pretty easy, right? But it's quite a process. Uh, to go from taking care of the hives and I know you have a whole what production facility here We'll take a peek at mm -hmm. here in a little bit. Yeah, you want to be calm and happy and if you're calm and happy for the most part uh, So will they be the other thing that depends on how they behave is Have they eaten enough? Bees get hangry <laughs> They really do. If they're well fed and they've got lots of supplies you can open up the hive pull hives and pull frames and Look at them all and go through them. They'll crawl on your arm and check you out and then go back. Uh, but if, if they're hungry, they're hangry <laughs> and they get mean. So uh, that all depends on their, their attitude as well. And so you have to check on the time of day and how much food they have to determine when you're going to do certain things. And so like as in food, uh, do you supplement besides flowers? Well, obviously when the honey supers are on, which is where we collect the honey, we don't do anything other than let them collect honey because uh, that gives you the great product that you get to enjoy. But uh, after we've taken their, their honey, which was really their winter food supply, that's what they were planning on eating, uh, then I have to feed them. And you, you see all these here, our hives have this wooden piece on top, all these hives. That's a feeder. Uh, we, uh, that's what it looks like inside. And uh, you fill that up with sugar water and the bees come up through the hive and feed on the sugar water and then go back. And that's how they replenish their honey supply for the winter. Uh, that gets them through the winter. Uh, it's not in your honey, uh, but it gets them the food they need. Uh, and I add uh, a number of vitamins, minerals, and probiotics to, to help them be able to digest that and make quality, healthy hives. So how long have you been a Harvest Host member? Uh, we just started this in January. Okay. Uh, we found it and uh, didn't know much about it. We had a great piece of property to show folks, and we said, well, let's put it on there and see uh, how that works out. And I really enjoyed having the, the guests show up and be able to see the farm and show them what we do. Something came to me this morning uh, before I got up was that I, I think, you know, a lot of the younger folks, you know, growing up in this country don't really have the attachment to, uh, you know, farming and, oh, Oh, Maverick. Yeah, Maverick. <laughs> He's been swimming. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Wet dog. <laughs> but uh, a lot of the younger folks in this country don't really have an attachment to farming or, or where their food comes from. And it really made me think of how Harvest Hosts is really great for full-time or part-time RVers to bring their families and, and to get a connection to what it takes and where their food comes from, uh, whatever kind of farm it might be. And there's not just farms, but that's one, a huge section of the host locations. So I think what you're doing is is a win-win on so many different levels. I mean, we need the bees just to survive, and the bees need us, and that we also need to sh to share it with more people so they have that same concern uh, so we keep them around, so we can be around. Yeah. And I just think it's it's really a great service that you're doing to provide this. Um, for Harvest Hosts, there's no charge to stay here other than your annual membership fee, but then, you know, if you make a product purchase, that helps you. We got some of your jalapeno pear jelly mm -hmm. that I'm looking forward to. Uh, Sheree and I can't do a lot of carbs, but uh, we will list uh, your website where we, you know, people can pick up some of your various homemade, you know, honey products. But also, you have a program that uh, for those of us that can't consume a lot of honey, where they can help save the bees and help pollinate more crops, right? Yeah, we, uh, we started an Adopt-A-Hive program uh, for those who want to help with the bees but uh, you know, don't want to have to have bees in their backyard or, or take care of them. 
And what that program is, is it, it helps us with some of the just ridiculously rising costs of what it takes to treat some of those diseases that we just talked about. Uh, these little strips here, each one of these is about five bucks. Okay. And I gotta put four of them in each one of these hives. Okay. Uh, and so you start adding that up over 50 hives and it gets really expensive. Right. And then when I'm done, I test them and if the hive count isn't low enough or the mite count doesn't get down to where I wanted to, I gotta do it all again. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, our adopt hive program will help us, you can adopt a hive. And what that funding will help me with is you, we will purchase the, the medication for that hive uh, and then uh, you know take care of it. And then throughout the year, you'll get some honey out of that hive. We'll send some and- uh, Oh, cool. And, yeah, give you a picture of your hive and kind of give you an update on how things are going here in the apiary. And uh, so if you can't consume honey, uh, I mean, they make a great gift, mm -hmm. right? For others and, um, and how many uh, harvest host uh, members can you actually have here at one time? Yeah, so I've had as much just four uh, okay. in here. Um, I like to leave everybody lots of space. Right. Uh, so packing it in as harvest host doesn't make sense. So four. Uh, we have a couple on the front property and then uh, over where you're parked uh, by the windmill and by the pond. We, uh, uh, we put folks over there as well. Oh, wow. Love that spot. Uh, right by the windmill and uh, waking up to the rooster and the ducks and you don't hear any vehicles, no cars honking. It's just, it's so peaceful. Some of the best sleep we get anywhere mm -hmm. in an RV. And this winter I'm gonna be adding uh, some water and power uh, to a couple of our sites. Oh, wow. Uh, so okay. It's, it's, it's on the list, uh, which on the farm takes me a little while to get to you. But, uh, sure, <laughs> no, uh, and that's one thing as Harvest Host members, we don't expect any kind of uh, niceties, like any kind of hookups, but wow, when there is something available, that's great. You have a dump station mm -hmm. right now, and uh, yeah, anything that's added is, is just a bonus. And what we'll do is we'll list uh, your information down below, so if people wanna support with the Adopt-A-Hive program and uh, or order some products, or just make sure this is on uh, the way, like you're right off of I-95, so it's a real easy place to stop by whether you're going north or south. Here are our pear orchard and our muscadine, where our grapes come from, or where our jelly comes from. Oh, okay. That's primarily our pear tree, and we've got four others there, and then this, these muscadines are about 80 years old. Wow. Yeah, you see, look, you can, they're just huge, and we pull, uh, in a normal year, about 600 pounds of grapes off of there, which is enough to make about 1,000 bottles of jelly. Wildflower honey is comes in in the fall, and it's dark and richer uh, because the summer flowers don't produce as much nectar, but the nectar they do produce has the, a lot more flavor of that actual flower to it. So you're who woke me up this morning. They're, they're angry that I put up chicken netting around my, my tomatoes. Oh. <laughs> No free lunch, huh? I can't figure it out. This is your uh, production facility? This is where we pack honey and label. Uh, Secret Garden Bees World Headquarters. I know this because I've got the sign that my daughter made for me. <laughs> okay, cool. You, you know, it's not, it's not much, uh, but it, it works for us right now, and we own it, so this is what we, we've made work. Uh, yeah, come on in, we'll show you what we've done. So this is our, uh, our packing and labeling and storage it's all in one we have to reconfigure everything to get things to work properly uh, <laughs> sure whatever we're doing you see right now i'm bottling up honey for uh, uh, some festivals i've got coming up uh, i was in here this morning our honey goes into these these two 25 gallon tanks for those who do the math that's 600 pounds of honey uh, they uh, goes in here and then it comes into this bottler here uh, that we are uh, where we fill uh, this bottle here allows us to fill each and every bottle precisely to the exact amount. Uh, no, no mess. Uh, it keeps everything nice and sanitary for the customers. The bottling tanks allow us to, to load in a lot of honey and then be able to process through large batches like this. That's the only way we can get things done, which is a big change from the old days when we were doing it by hand uh, by on a kitchen table 
uh, from a five gallon bucket. It was uh, oh wow, it was a lot of work. You know, all these here with the yellow tape are already bottled up, so I've got about three thousand pounds in stock. Uh, we're going to be delivering a lot of it next week, and then I've got three or four festivals, so this will all clear out by the end of the month. And I'll start over fill it, refilling it. <laughs> and you don't just sell at festivals or to Harvest Host members. You you also sell to some grocery stores, right? Yeah, our primary market is uh, the fresh market grocery store. Okay. Uh, we're blessed. Uh, if you come here, you can try our honey, but then you can pick it up again uh, at uh, every fresh market store from North Carolina north and all the way out to west to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we haven't gotten Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida yet, so uh, if you come here and stay and like the honey, go to your fresh market and ask them to stock it, because uh, I'd sure like to be down there as well. So how do you get the honey off the comb? What's what's the process for that? So not in here. Uh, uh, I've got an enclosed trailer that's wired for electricity, and we put in, uh, we have an extractor in there that you put... 24 frames of honey in and then it turn it on and it spins them out and it centrifugally spins the honey out and then it goes through a small filter uh, into our our buckets uh, where we then store it until we're ready to put it into these containers and then it only gets done twice a year uh, spring and fall ideally spring and fall this year's fall wasn't all that great when you're done you get You get you know bucket of honey, ready to be going into the into the. A floor. lot of honey. <laughs> yeah. I keep uh, we keep about eight thousand pounds in stock uh, here in the fall, and we'll use that all winter long uh, to meet demand for the grocery stores. So you're really only doing this twice a year. The extraction, yeah. Okay. And, and that comes from the bees. I mean, uh, the spring all the flowers bloom, and so that's when the bees make honey. And then we take all that honey from them, and then they spend the rest of the summer harvesting the wildflower nectar and making more honey for their winter. And then we take that from them in the fall, uh, and then we feed them sugar to get them back into snuff to get through the winter. But the packaging is year round. Uh, right now it's five gallon buckets full of honey, and uh, I have a little ladder, and I each one of those weighs 60 pounds, and then I come up here and fill these. It takes 10 buckets to fill them. So I'm picking 60 pounds up over my head while standing on a ladder. Uh, not an optimal solution. I'm hoping to be able to save up my money to get a pump. Uh, a pump up in. <laughs> sure. And this equipment's not cheap, right? No, this, these two things right here were about $20,000 combined. Wow. Uh, so this is like a, a nice car sitting here on top of my, my, my stuff. But uh, the change in the business was worth it. Uh, I'd save it up for a pump which seems like a small thing, but a honey pump is about $4,000. So it takes me a little while to get there. Sure. All natural honey eventually crystallizes. Matter of fact, if we buy honey that doesn't crystallize eventually and it's sitting out on your shelf, you should be suspect of it because it means it, it probably has corn syrup in it or it means that the, the producer heated the honey up to over 120 degrees and killed all the enzymes that are in the honey. Uh, so if you're using natural honey it's it'll crystallize now the reason for that is our houses are 72 degrees room temperature the temperature of the hive is 95 degrees so it's not an issue while it's in the hive so one of the ways we combat that is I've got this this freezer that we repurposed into a honey warmer and so if you're a harvest host and you come here what you're gonna get is nice fresh warm honey out of the honey warmer that I keep in there for the harvest host uh, kept it at a constant 94 degrees and it's not going to be crystallized. It's going to be nice and fresh for you to be able to come in and enjoy. And so we keep five or six cases in there uh, just for that reason. And if it crystallizes, if you rewarm it, it, you know, it, the yeah. crystals, it yeah. goes back to normal, right? Yeah, all you have to do to uncrystallize honey, you know, people think their honey is no good because it's crystallized. It's just fine. All you do is heat up pot of boiling water on your stove just just almost boiling turn the water off set your bottle of honey in it walk away come back in an hour and it'll be back to where it's supposed to be don't put it in the microwave the microwave kills all the enzymes that are in the honey uh, just use a nice warm water and right speaking of that honey has a lot of health benefits right there's a lot of good stuff in honey yeah, as long as the honey has its, still has the enzymes and microbes in it that the bees produce naturally for it, it is naturally antimicrobial and antibacterial. Uh, 
And if you think about that, that makes sense because it's just going to be in the hive all winter long for them to eat. It's not, you know, refrigerated, it's, you know, anything like that. Uh, so, one, honey can even be treat, used to treat wounds. Uh, Methodist University here in Fayetteville uses it uh, for turf burns on all of their folks who are, who are playing athletes. So it's rubbed a little honey on it, it'll heal a turf burn right up. Uh, it's also good for your allergies. Uh, a lot of folks ingest it uh, just uh, for general health pieces and parts. Secondary benefit to being a beekeeper is uh, uh, it's been proven now apitherapy for uh, arthritis. Uh, I told you all I get stung a lot and, uh, and I don't have arthritis in my hands anymore. Uh, Interesting. Uh, I always thought it was a myth until I got stung and started getting stung a number of times and uh, now I, I, don't, I don't have any of that. My carpal tunnel went away, my arthritis in my hands went away. Uh, it's been pretty neat. Well, it's a beautiful property here and, uh, you know, again, uh, as Harvest Host members, I mean, uh, we're blessed to have this available to us and so many unique camping experiences, places to park overnight all over the country. Uh, thanks again, Jim, for sharing your property okay. and your business and your story with mm -hmm. us. Again, we're going to put Jim and Christie's information down below. So if you want to support uh, the Adopt a Hive program or purchase any of their honey products, uh, you can do that. And of course, if you want to stay here, there's a link down below where you can join Harvest Host if you have not joined yet. It's a very reasonable membership and you can, you know, book a spot to come out here and stay. Yeah, I'd love to have you. And, uh, my wife's birthday is coming up and she wanted us to take our RV to a campground somewhere uh, to enjoy. And of course I procrastinated and I didn't book anything. So the normal campgrounds we go to are booked up and I'm just trying to figure it out. And then I had the blinding flash of the obvious is that I'm a harvest host uh, host. And as part of that, I get um, harvest host membership. So I gotta get on the app tonight myself and go look for where I'm taking my wife for her birthday it's part of Harvest Host. It'll be great. And yeah, that's a good reminder for me. I, I haven't mentioned it very much uh, on the channel, but uh, yeah, if you have a unique location like this, uh, you can become a host. Uh, we'll put a link down below where you can sign up as a host. And uh, there's also Boondockers Welcome, which is a Harvest Host company and that's for people that are also a lot of other RVers that have just RV space on their property, not necessarily a business of any kind, but space uh, to have other RVers park. So we'll put all those resources down below as well. Take a look at us on Facebook as well. Uh, okay. Uh, we post a lot of informational videos about the farm and what's going on here, and you can learn a lot about the bees. Okay. We will link to your Facebook page and your other social media down below as well. And right over here, we will share some of our other Harvest Host videos. Thanks for watching, guys.